so have you calculated this for a hexagon so how many axes of symmetry have you got yes there will be three axes of symmetry not more so how see here so at first you draw a hexagon separately at first you draw a regular hexagon totally separately say this is a hexagon regular hexagon okay now you try to find out how many axes of symmetry are there in this figure so if it is a regular hexagon so at first your drawing should be very correct then you will find how many axes of symmetry are there so it will be like this this is regular hexagon so for this regular hexagon we will find one axis of symmetry like this so another axis of symmetry will be like this and another axis of symmetry will be like this so not more there will be only three axis of symmetry so that figure i have drawn here in three dimensional so this one is one axis of symmetry this is say i1 another is passing through this so this is i2 another is passing through this this is i3 and this is passing through perpendicular to the plane so this is ij so in this condition also for a hexagon also i1 plus i2 plus i3 will be equal to ij okay now let us see some use of both the theorem mixed together that means parallel axis theorem and perpendicular axis theorem when both are added then how we can calculate the moment of inertia of a body about an axis suppose you are said you are asked that you know the moment of inertia of a disc about its center yes we know this moment of inertia of a disc about its center that is equal to m r square by 2 now we want to know the moment of inertia of the disc about an axis which is a tangent to the disc that means now we want to rotate the disc like this suppose this is the disc and this is the axis now we want to make it rotate like this this is the disc so we want to make it rotate like this so one this is suppose and the disc is here it is like this okay so we want to make it rotate like this so disc is here so we want to know the moment of inertia about this axis which is tangent to the surface of the disc now at first what you have to do now we at first we have to use here perpendicular axis theorem so first divide this so this is say ix and this is iy so we are getting two axis of symmetry so ix plus iy is equal to ij that is equal to mr square by 2 so from this we can find ix plus iy is equal to ij or you can say 2ix because ix is equal to iy so 2ix is equal to ij that is equal to m r square by 2 so i x will be equal to m r square by 4 so this is the moment of inertia of the see this is i x is equal to m r square by 4 so this is i x now we have got i x so after getting i x that means i x is like this see the figure at the top so this is our i x so we have got i x so this is ix now we have to shift the axis from ix to the required axis so now we have to apply parallel axis theorem at first we have applied perpendicular axis theorem to find ix from the z plane to the x plane so after this plane, xy plane so after this getting a ix we have to shift the ix to the extreme corner so this distance must be equal to the radius of the disc so now applying parallel axis theorem we can find suppose this is i dash so this is i dash so i dash will be equal to ix plus m into r square so now you can find it like this way 
So I dash will be I x plus m r square. Why m r square? Because m is the mass of the disk say, and r is the distance of this parallel axis, distance between two parallel axis. So we have already calculated I x that is equal to m r square by four. So m r square by four plus m r square. So that is giving you five by four m r square. So this is the moment of inertia of the disk about one of its tangent at its side, at one of its side. Okay. So in this way we can apply perpendicular and parallel axis theorem both simultaneously for a sphere also. Suppose from the center we know for a sphere, say for a hollow sphere. So for a hollow sphere we know that. So this will be easy. For sphere it will be easy. Suppose this is a hollow sphere. So we know the moment of inertia about its center passing through its center. That is equal to say i. Now we want to find out its moment of inertia about one of its tangent. So this is i x. So here we have to apply only parallel axis theorem, nothing else. So about the center, we know that its moment of inertia is for a hollow sphere that is 2 by 3 m r square, and we are shifting the axis parallelly, the distance equal to its radius. So now in this case, i x will be equal to i plus m r square, where i is 2 by 3 m r square. Plus m r square. So that is giving 5 by 3 m r square. So this is for a hollow sphere. We can apply only parallel axis theorem. But in case of flat body, like say uh, a plate, a disc. Or say a square plate, a rectangular plate. There you may require both the axis theorem. That means parallel axis theorem simultaneously, perpendicular axis theorem and parallel axis theorem. Both the theorem are required. So in the numerical section, we will discuss about the moment of inertia of different bodies about different axes and moment of inertia of different bodies connected together. But at first, let me clear all the theoretical portion. Okay.